G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some players who cost themselves a premiership medallion by requesting a trade at the wrong time. So as the title suggests, we're gonna be looking at players who requested moves to other clubs right before their original club won a grand final. Before we get into the video, I do urge you to go check out our sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping on some fantastic male grooming products, some accessories, go to the website, manscaped.com. You get 20 percent off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word at checkout. But without further ado, here are nine AFL trades that cost players a premiership. The first player on this list is Brett Deledio back in 2016. Now Brett Deledio spent 12 seasons playing for the Richmond Tigers after being pick one in the 2004 National Draft. Now no one can deny Deledio was a great servant for the Richmond Footy Club over a particularly bleak period at times for the club and he won two best and fairest. But at the end of the 2016 season, he requested a trade to the GWS Giants who had just come forth, likely chasing some success. He was traded for a first round pick and a third round pick and given where the Giants were on the ladder, right in contention, they were more than happy to make this deal happen. But in a cruel twist, it would be Delidio that would be on the losing side as the Tigers defeated the Giants in the 2017 preliminary final. Richmond of course won the 2017 Premiership and of course went on to win the 2019 and 2020 flags as well. Having been such a good servant for the club over such a long period of time, that would have no doubt been very heartbreaking for Brett Delidio. The second player on this list is actually Gary Ablett Sr. And not everyone may be aware that Gary Ablett Sr. started his career at the Hawthorne Footy Club. He played just six games of footy in his time there and couldn't quite adjust to Melbourne life, regularly missing training. And it forced Hawthorne coach Alan Jeans and Hawthorne to part ways with him. Ablett then took a year off from the VFL. I believe he played a year of country footy. He was then courted by Geelong and after some painstaking negotiations, they agreed a $60,000 transfer fee from Hawthorne to clear him to play for Geelong. Now, technically, this wasn't actually a trade as the rules were a little bit different back then, but Ablett's unwillingness to play for Hawthorne would cost him five premierships as Geelong, of course, never won a flag with Gary Ablett Sr. The third player on this list is Ryan Griffin of the Western Bulldogs who departed at the end of the 2014 season. Griffin played 10 seasons with the Bulldogs after being pick three in the 2004 National Draft. He would be a key player for that club both over successful periods and some less successful periods and he won two best and fairest, one All-Australian and in his final year he was actually captain of the Bulldogs. At the end of that 2014 season with a new coach coming in he requested a trade to the GWS Giants and the Dogs made it happen. They sent he and pick six for Tom Boyd in return. Just two seasons later the Bulldogs would heroically win the 2016 Grand Final and Tom Boyd would play a starring role. Sadly for Griffin he would retire during the 2018 season missing out on the Giants 2019 Grand Final and of course retiring without even having played in a Grand Final. The next player on this list is Dan Butler who was originally at the Richmond Tigers who crossed to St Kilda at the end of 2019. Now unlike the other players on this list so far Dan Butler was actually a premiership player at his former club. Butler would play 55 games for the Richmond Footy Club after being drafted in 2014 and of course would be in the grand final side when Richmond beat Adelaide in 2017. By the end of the 2019 season Butler would find himself out of the AFL team going into finals and unfortunately would miss out on the 2019 premiership team. He would request a trade to St Kilda for 2020 and announce himself as one of the best small forwards in the competition that year. Based on this breakout performance in the 2020 season, it's fair to suggest that if Butler had stated his original club, there's a good chance he would have his second Premiership medallion. In keeping with the Richmond theme, the next player we're going to nominate is Tyrone Vickery of Richmond, who finished his career at the Hawthorne Footy Club. Now, Ty Vickery would manage 119 games at the highest level for Richmond after being taken with pick eight in the 2008 National Draft. After playing 17 games in Richmond's disappointing 2016 season, Vickery announced he'd be exploring his free agency options and then proceeded to sign with Hawthorne. Naturally, he would then miss out on Richmond's successful 2017 campaign where they won the Premiership and he would manage just six games for Hawthorne. There is a particular irony in Vickery leaving Richmond right before their dynasty started and joining Hawthorne right as theirs came to an end. The next player we're going to talk about is Lance Franklin of the Hawthorne Footy Club who 
left at the end of the 2013 season to join Sydney as a free agent. Now Lance Franklin is a good chance to go down as one of the game's greatest ever players, let alone one of the best players ever to change clubs. After two premierships and 182 games at Hawthorne spanning nine seasons, Franklin would move under free agency to join the Sydney Swans at the end of 2013. At the time, he was a four-time All-Australian, two-time Coleman medalist, and six-time leading goal kicker for Hawthorne. His contract of $10 million over nine seasons shocked the AFL world and remains to date one of the biggest trade or free agency stories we've heard. The narrative was set up beautifully in the 2014 season with Cindy finishing on top of the ladder and facing Franklin's old side Hawthorne in the 2014 Grand Final. The Hawks, however, would have their revenge, winning this Grand Final by 10 goals and proceeding to win the following year's Grand Final 2015 as well. Since joining Sydney, Buddy has missed out on two Hawthorne flags while playing in two losing Grand Finals with Sydney himself. Next up, we're back with the Richmond theme and this time it's Brandon Ellis who left the Richmond Footy Club to join Gold Coast at the end of 2019. Now Ellis was a two-time Premiership player with Richmond, playing in 176 games across eight seasons. His final game for the Richmond Footy Club would be fitting an 89-point Grand Final victory over GWS. That off-season, Ellis would exercise his free agency rights and join Gold Coast on a large five-year deal. Richmond would of course win the 2020 Grand Final, a campaign that Brandon Ellis surely would have been an important part of. All things being considered though, the fact that Ellis has two Premiership medallions already, as well as what I'm assuming is a very generous Gold Coast Suns contract, I'm sure he's not losing too much sleep over this one. For the next player, we're going to travel a little bit back in time once again, and this time it's Alistair Clarkson back in 1995. Now most of us only know Alistair Clarkson as the legendary coach of Hawthorne, but some people will remember that he was actually a footballer as well for North Melbourne and Melbourne. Clarkson would play 93 games with North Melbourne over the 80s and 90s, although due to a lack of regular playing time, he requested a trade to the Melbourne Demons at the end of 1995. Unfortunately for Clarkson, North would go in to win the Premiership the very next year and then win another one three years later in 1999. Clarkson would manage just 41 games across two seasons for Melbourne before retiring having never played in a Premiership. The ninth and final player on this list is Clinton Young of Hawthorne and Collingwood. Clinton Young played 116 games of AFL for Hawthorne between the 2005 and 2012 seasons and was also a part of the 2008 winning Premiership side. He would also be in the losing grand final team of 2012 when the Hawks got done by Sydney and this would be his final game for the club. During that offseason, Young explored free agency and signed as an unrestricted free agent with the Collingwood Magpies. In a cruel twist, Hawthorne would go on to win the next three flags of Young's career while he would manage just 21 more games for Hawthorne, battling form and an injury and retiring, never playing in another premiership. So that's it guys, nine players I've listed who missed out on AFL premierships due to untimely trades. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my list. Is there anyone obvious I've missed out? As always, I welcome you to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video guys. Cheers.